Well, despite the weather, high school teams have been duking it out for the state semifinals. And Marley Weirda and Alec Janikopoulos and the rest of the Frenzy team, they're out braving that winter storm. They join us now with our evening sports. Marley. Yeah, the Frenzy waited until Saturday this week as we have a handful of area teams that are looking to punch their tickets to the state final at Ford Field. Those teams braved less than ideal conditions, and so did we. We made so did we. six <laughs> stops at all division areas. We'll start with D1. Caledonia, who breathes past past their regional for Grand Ledge. Want the same result against Clarkston. First half kind of looked that way. Check out Cal, they're up 7 nothing. Then Blake Heron takes it from the pocket untouched as he goes to the house for a 14 nothing lead going in to the half. And there was more of the same in the second half. Mason McKenzie just drops it in the hands of Derek Pennington to the second. It's 21 nothing after the 17 yard toss. Defense puts a bow on it. Brock Townsend with the pick. That will put this one away. The Scots walk to Detroit. Final score 21 to zero. Forest Hill Central taking on Dexter. If the Rangers can beat Dexter, it'll be the first time at state since 1994. Alec, what will we be doing then? Uh, I was born. born, yeah. <laughs> Forest Hill Central responds here. Three to tie, a touchdown to win it. Mason McDonald hands it off to their star back, JT Hartman, who gets a big run to get the Rangers away, yards away from the win. Third down, McDonald will keep it. Dive for it. Big pile, and he got it. The line judge says yes, and they are slipping and sliding <laughs> and celebrating as they are headed to Ford Field for the state championship after the Rangers win this one in double overtime 22-17. Muskegon wants back in Detroit for the first time in three years. DeWitt beat them in the semis back in 2020. Big Reds are already up two scores heading into the second quarter, and Makai Guy is going to call his own number. Skips his way into the end zone. Two-point conversion is good, so Muskegon extends its lead to 21. Moments later, Muskegon with the ball back after a fumble recovery. It's Makai Guy again, and the snow could not slow this guy down. <laughs> that was one of his six touchdowns of the day as the Big Reds go up 28 zip. And then they dare to throw the ball, but this one was well worth it. Guy finds Destin Piggy sliding in, throws up the peace sign in there for the touchdown as they lead 35 nothing. And Muskegon is going on to win it 49 to 21 to head to the ship. Let's keep rolling on the D4, South Christian and Edwardsburg. And they're trying to heat up after what was a Awfully cold game, and they took no time to heat up. Opening play of the game, Jake Tahan keeps it. He saw his way through traffic. A 50-yard touchdown run to open this thing. It's 7-0 Sailors, and it kept getting better for Sailors fans. Out of the second quarter, wind at their back. Play action. Tahan finds Seth Ritzma. Watch him hang on at the pass at the knee level. 14-0 Sailors. Things got closer as we got closer to this one. The Edwardsburg Edwards fight back. Brendan Siebel gets into the end zone as he fights there. Suddenly it's a one possession game. But once again, Dahan airs it out deep. The catch is made. Once again, a great play by Carson Viss. And that would be the decider. South Christian punches their ticket to Ford Field. They win 26 to 20. Well, Catholic Central's been hard to beat in the playoffs. Gladwin wants to change that. Strong start for Gladwin. It'll be Logan Koktopovich with the keeper for the score here to make it fourth and goal. Makes it 22-7 flying G's. The Catholic Central answers with a big, it'll be a scoop and score here on defense before the half. Isaac Redeemer with the scoop and score makes it 22-14 but we're going to the fourth quarter. Things coming down to the wire. Cougars down 28-14. Still a chance for them to win it. Braden Sweeney is going to roll out, throw a jump ball to Sam Tidema for the score. 28-21. Gladwin still ahead. CC gets it back, driving with one last chance, and Nick Wheeler will deny him, though. An interception seals it for the victory as this one ends 28-21 as the defending state champions are upset by Gladwin. Then we go to D6, West Catholic taking on Clinton. We're tied at zero, but look at Tim Kloska. Running angry is an understatement. He takes half the defense with him to the house as they score first with authority. They miss the PAT, so they're up 6-0. Later in the second, it's Kloska again. This time, a little less physicality, a whole lot more cardio. This is an 85-yard dash to the house. We had to speed the tape up because he was <laughs> running so fast. It's 12-0 after another missed PAT. Later in the third, I'll give you a wild guess who runs this one to the house. Yeah, Klosko once more. This was one of his five touchdowns as they were dominant today in their win over Clinton. Your final score, 33-14.
We got more to come. We take you to the gridiron once more as we check in with some college teams. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've got more playoffs for you. This time it's Davenport and Ferris State on a rematch. In the second quarter, check out this throw from Whitaker. A great toss. It's a contested ball, but they give it to Demetrius Garrett to take a 6-7 lead. Later on, Ferris gets the lead back on the next possession. Looks like a dump off to Amari O'Brien. Instead, he just slums his way to the house. A 53-yard touchdown as he is just weaving through the Panther defense. They regain the lead 13-7. And people are enjoying the game however they can, especially <laughs> on the move there. Start of the second half, it's 27 Ferris, and Vincent Cooley puts a cap on the Davenport season. The pick six goes 67 yards out. Ferris dominant in their tournament opener, 41 to seven. 